Yeah. I wasn't sure if you, I thought you guys were gonna let it slide. That's why I didn't say anything. <laughs> Yo, real recognize, real recognize the voice. We go by the name of Clement Martha on the front line, and you're tuned into Amarudon TV. It is what it is. Peace. So, first off, Clement Martha and the front line. Yes, sir. One member. One member. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, we were just having a little, not a joke, but what happened today? You said that. Oh, no, he's gonna <laughs> put me on blast on camera. <laughs> How's the day been so far? Uh, yeah, we had a gig last night um, at the Cafe de Paris. Um, so, yeah, like literally, um, I just made my way here mm -hmm. and I was a bit in a rush. I was in the rush and I slipped. I guess it rained this morning. And I slipped <laughs> and I fell down the flat stairs. You know, got a bit of. Uh, Bit of dirt on me and that fresh jacket, but you know what? Just keep it moving, right? My neck hurts actually. I should go to the go oh, yeah. to the hospital, but I'm alright. I'm a soldier. It's I'm okay. a soldier. Yeah, yeah. It's okay yeah, yeah, totally. You might pass out halfway through. <laughs> I'll be alright. So now let's talk about first of all how all you guys got together initially, like you know the front line and Clement Martha. Tell me about that. Uh, Clement Martha from the front line is a seven-piece band, Southwest London. Um, I'm a hip hop grime MC. So I was doing gigs um, like in universities and doing all the freshest stuff. And um, I remember a time I was like, I needed a band behind me, you know? Um, and I was inspired by the Jay-Z and Link up, uh, Linkin Park hookup. And um, I just felt like I just needed a band. So I hooked up with a friend of mine called Dion, who's on drums. And he introduced me to Stacy on keys and Dion um, introduced me to Dan on guitars. And then Stacy introduced me to Rich. And then um, the following members just came together. So I remember the first day we went to the rehearsal room, it just naturally blossomed. Everything just went down so well. And um, we got the plan. It was like, even though we're from different cultures and backgrounds, it just kind of just naturally. Yeah, it was never like a struggle to put, to put stuff together, which is weird, because looking at us all, you might think, how is that all coming together? But it just, it yeah. just seems so natural in the room. Everyone, I think all our personalities really connect with each other, which helps when we're making music, because mm -hmm. Yeah, we all connect with each other on that level as well. So, what was your own musical influences? Because Clem said he's from like yeah, pop I came from like a really sort of rock, pop, punk, sort of the Guns and Roses and stuff like that. I used to be into all that. Well, I still still am, of course. But um, yeah, and then some of the other members were similar to that. That's how I knew them from that sort of from that circuit, the pop punk side of things and the live bands and stuff. So um, yeah, that's where I sort of came from. I mean, I still keep some of those influences in the music when we write and stuff, but obviously, over time, I've, I, even I've broadened my horizons listening to other stuff and things like that, so it's cool. Likewise, man, because I just listen to hip hop. Yeah. And you know, since I hooked up with the guys, I'm listening to a lot of rock music, a lot of indie music, so it yeah, has broadened my horizon too. So, in terms of still about hip hop, so who were you listening to as a youngster in terms of hip hop? Um, Wyclef John. I was more into the Fugees. Um, and then also I listen to a lot of Jay Z. I got Jay Z's, I got Jay Z's album collection. You know every single album, so I'm heavily influenced by Jay Z. Um, but yeah, I had a mix of music that I listened uh, to. It was like even Annie Lennox. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm an '80s baby, so Annie Lennox was around. Um, Phil Collins. Um, so yeah, just a mix of of genres in the house. You know, um, from reggae to pop to to rock to soul and everything like that but hip hop was my was what I felt was natural to me. Now over time featuring gets? Yeah. Right, so that's that's a very grime that's the grime MC you know, Yeah. They say most most people say he's like the grime king. So yeah. is there a bit of worry that you know the grime audience is not really ones that actually purchase music too much. How do you deal with that type of you know pressure problem? Uh, first, and, first and foremost, uh, the reason why we got Getz mm -hmm. is because I respect his work ethic. His hustle is amazing. You know, he's been around for many years and um, always putting out mixtapes and albums and stuff. And um, we just felt like he represented, you know, work ethic. You know, nobody works harder than us. That's the statement that we're putting out there. So Getz was just, a, you know, the great addition to the track. Um, grime, like they don't, they don't, they don't buy music. But the, the following is very, um, what can I say? It's um, like a cult. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a cult, you know what I mean? Everybody is like really supportive of it, you know what I mean? Like everybody goes out and spread the love, watches the videos and everything like that, goes to, to, to the parties and everything. But obviously the sales as a match up, 
but I guess it's from the society. Do you know what I mean? Crime, crime music represents um, um, the hood, you know, urban, urban areas and stuff. And these these people or these customers, they can't go out and buy a ten pound album. Do you know what I mean? So that's the reason why. But I think when we're getting older, everyone's starting to get jobs and stuff. So now you're starting to see a lot of success um, from the urban artists because everybody's growing up. So the times when Tiny Temper, Tinchy Stride and all that was out when they were like 16, 17, people couldn't buy those, people couldn't buy the material. But now they're like, they're businessmen now. You know what I mean? These are their, they, you know, every day they wake up, it's their jobs. So now a lot of people are going out there and supporting these people because they're at that level where they can go out and purchase music. So that's why you're seeing the urban music is blossoming so well. And everybody's doing it well in terms of quality control. Back in the day, people would just do uh, cameras on their video phones, and yeah. you know, Channel U was the was the only outlet. But now it's just open up, so that's what's happening.